to chapter 45 and Daniel chapter 6 tonight. Isaiah and chapter 45 has become a real familiar text for us looking through this series of sweet things out of dark places. You say, how many more of these we got to go? Well, we got, we got a ways to go yet. You say, why? Because there's a lot of darkness in the Bible. There's a lot of dark places in your life. Well, I'm glad there's a God that will be with us through all of them tonight. Isaiah 45 and Daniel chapter 6. We'll, we'll get to Daniel momentarily, but um, I want you to notice what the Lord said here in, in our text. verse Isaiah 45 verse 3. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest, watch this word tonight, know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. Or verse 4, for Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not, here's the word again, known me. I, I, he says, I'm taking you through these dark places, and I'm trying to get you to know more about me. You're, you're missing it. You're missing it. Verse 5, I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Verse 6, that they may know. You see that word four different times down through there. No, known, no, known. That they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is none else. Can I say this to you before we jump to Daniel chapter 6? We often so many times get focused on ourselves in our dark places. I'm talking about me. I'm I'm talking about for me, myself. Any dark place that God's ever put me at many times, Brother Charlie, I, I I get the mully grubs and I get to looking totally at me tonight. But according to what we've looked at in verses 3, 4, 5, and 6, in each verse, we find that the dark place, the treasure in the darkness, the hidden riches, is is not for us to get focused on ourselves. The main thing, according to this text tonight, that God is trying to get across to you and to others is that He is the Lord. We're going to find this tonight when we wind up in our story in Daniel 6, when we finally culminate it. It's a familiar story. It's not a text that you're not unfamiliar with tonight, but I hope to encourage you out of it this evening. But what we're going to find is then when we get to the end of the story, it is the Lord that gets all the credit tonight. When we get to the end of Daniel's den of darkness this evening, it's the Lord that gets known. It's not about Daniel. I know we focus and we always talk about Daniel in the lion's den. And Daniel in the lion's den. And and we'll touch that. We'll hit all that tonight. But you realize the hero of the story is not Daniel. The hero of the story is God. What does going through a den of darkness do for Daniel? It helps him know more about the I am God of Isaiah 45. What does you going through your dens of darkness do for you? It brings you out on the other side and helps you know more about the I am God tonight. That's what the Lord tries to do through all of our darkness, to know him better. You know what Paul said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, and here's how I know him better, here's how I know him better, and the fellowship of his sufferings, dark places. God allows us in these dens of darkness to know him more perfectly tonight. Our text, Daniel chapter 6, verse number 14. Let's read several verses here together. Daniel 6 and verse number 14. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun. It's a dark place to deliver him. 
Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree nor statute with the king establisheth may be changed. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night. Daniel is in this dark den in a night season. He passed the night with fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him. And his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the den of the lions? We'll stop our reading right there and leave you on a cliffhanger. You may not know if Daniel made it or not. You say, I'm in the middle of a dark den myself. Cliffhanger. Same God that got Daniel out. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't sure I'm going to make it. You know what happens in the rest of the story. So why are you doubting in your dark den that God's going to do any different with yours than he did with Daniel's? He's able this evening. So tonight we're going to look at Daniel's den of darkness when we're talking about these Sweet things out of dark places. A.W. Tozer, great old author of yesteryear, A.W. Tozer said this. He said, God does his deepest works in our darkest hours. Many of God's deepest works in our lives are done in the darkest hours of our life. It's a, it's a double dark den for Daniel tonight. It's not only dark literally outside, but then these, these dens, they, they rolled these stones over the mouth of it. You just read it right there. When they put these men in there and rolled a stone, it got dark down in there too. I mean, Daniel's in the dark of night and he's in the dark dark of the lion's den as well with these nocturnal beasts walking all around him. It's dark in there but he can hear them walking all around and growling and doing whatever. I mean it had to be a little nerve wracking tonight. I don't know about you, but there are, there are many dens of darkness that God's people can wind up in life. We've heard prayer requests tonight. You know what I ascertained from the prayer requests and the things that are in many people's lives tonight? You, you, you in a den of darkness. <laughs> you, you in a place you didn't expect to come. You wasn't looking for come. You didn't want to come. But, but here you sat tonight. And, and you say, is, can God bring any sweet things out of the dark place? Well, I, I don't know. Let's find out from Daniel, and we'll see tonight. I got four little things to say real quick, and we'll hurry and be done. Let me say, number one, we see the cause of this den. Now, don't miss this. I don't want you to miss this point. This ain't the best point of the message, but it might be the one that helps you the most. What is the cause of the den tonight? How come Daniel winds up in this place? What is the cause of the dark den? Go back to verse number 4. We'll start in verse 3. Verse 3 of chapter 6. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Verse 4. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault for as much as watch the cause. Watch why he winds up where he does. It is because he was faithful. Neither was there any error or fault found in him. Verse 5, then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Preacher, what is the cause for Daniel winding up in this den of darkness tonight? Listen to me, it's because he's faithfully serving the Lord. You say, are you telling me that God has rewarded Daniel for his faithfulness with going into a dark den? I don't know that I would say he's rewarded him for it, but that's what he got for it. 
Now, now I want you to understand something. Daniel ain't drinking liquor. Daniel ain't out running around with wild women at night. Daniel ain't, ain't, ain't forsook his prayer closet. He's praying three times a day. He's prophesying. He's working faithfully for his boss. He's working faithfully for the Lord. He's got an excellent spirit. He's not bitter. He's not mad about being in the shape he's in down in Babylon and being a, a, a prisoner in Babylon, if you will. He's, he's not got a, a bad attitude, a bad spirit. He's not fussing and fighting and cussing and raising Cain. He's serving the Lord, living faithfully, and he winds up right smack dab in the middle of a dark lion's den. Listen to me. Daniel, does, don't miss this tonight. Daniel does not wind up in the dark den for something he does wrong. He winds up in a bad spot because of something he's doing right. Ditto Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel's buddies, just three chapters earlier. Three chapters earlier, these three fellas said, we're not bowing to you gods. We're not bowing to your music. We're not bending down to a false god. We're going to stand. And because, Brother Dan, they do something right, because they're being faithful to their God, they wind up in the burning, fiery furnace tonight. Ditto David. David is living right. David is behaving himself wisely according to 1 Samuel 18. David is behaving himself very wisely. 1 Samuel 18. David is behaving himself more wisely. 1 Samuel 18. It says those three statements about David. He behaved himself wisely, more wisely, very wisely. And you know what happens to David? He tries to get stuck to a wall by Saul with a javelin. And then Saul runs him all out in the night, out in the caves and rocks for years acting like a fugitive and a vagabond. Why? Because he's living faithfully and he's doing right. I just read the other day in Acts 12 uh, where James, the brother of John, got killed by Herod. Why? Because he's doing something right. I read where Peter in that same chapter gets locked up in the prison and he's that close to losing his own life. Why? He's doing something right. I find where Paul in Acts 16 is locked up in the Philippian jail and beat with many stripes. Why? Because he's doing something right. I read where your Savior and my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, is mocked, ridiculed, rejected, and nailed to a cross, not because he did anything wrong, but because he's doing something right. And brother, tonight, can I just give you a news update? Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You're sitting here tonight and you're saying, preacher, I'm in the midst of this dark lion's den. I'm in the midst of this dark place in my life. Well, let me just encourage you, child of God. I'm not, you, you might not be there because of something you've done wrong. I know we all got this, we all got this um, uh, 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 not persecution complex. We all got this punishment complex. Maybe that's a better way to say it. That as soon as something goes wrong in your life, immediately you say, God's beating me for something. God beat me. So what I do? Why am I getting beat? What's happening in my life? Can I say, I'm not saying that God doesn't use chastisement to judge us. But let me say this. Many times in your Christian life, it's not because God's beating you while you wind up where you are. It's because maybe you're living faithful, reading your Bible, witnessing, tithing, giving the missions, trying to see people get saved, helping the local church, raising your family for God, not bowing down to the gods of this world. And you think because you're doing Doing these things that no trouble will ever come to you. That is not the Bible precept and principle. The Bible precept and principle is in this world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world tonight. You say, preacher, I sure am getting it in the neck. It might be because God looked down and said, that's a faithful woman. You say, preacher, I'm getting it in the neck. It might be because God said they can handle it because they're a faithful Christian. Don't get the mully grubs and get the pooch mouth maybe the cause for your darkness is the same cause for Daniel's darkness it's because you're faithful tonight <laughs> maybe the reason for your trouble you're going through ain't because you're out living wicked and doing wrong maybe it's because you're faithful I really wish that wasn't so brother Skip I can't tell you how many times I've said it from this pulpit and I watch it happen that, that somebody makes their mind up, I'm going to live for God. Brother, who do they make their mind up? I'm going to serve God. I'm going to live for the Lord. And immediately I think to myself, Brother Hyde, oh, Lord. 
here it comes. Just get ready. I don't know what you thought. I don't know if you thought I'm going to enlist in the army of God, get on the front line, and start being a faithful soldier of Jesus Christ, and the enemy's not going to shoot back. Do you realize how unreasonable this sounds? We are in a war. I told you Sunday night we're wrestling principalities, powers, rulers, darkness of this world. I know we have someone that's more powerful than them, Brother Tim, but we're still in a fight. And how unreasonable is it that you think you're going to stand in a war zone and never get shot at? How unreasonable you think you're going to stand in a war zone and the enemy's never going to attack you? It's going to happen. Don't be shocked by it. The Bible said, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. This should not be like, why, why is this happening? It's happening because you're faithful. Now, I'm going to get to something better in just a minute, but just hang on on this. Even Paul said it like this. Paul said, Paul said, because we have this treasure in earth and vessels, because we're shining the light of the gospel, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, this is what he says, because of all these factors, we're living for God, shining the light, trying to see sinners saved, 2 Corinthians 4, he says this, Brother Cliff, we're troubled on every side. What do I get in return for shining the gospel light, serving the Lord, having Jesus on the inside of my heart? You're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. You know I mean, it's coming. What is the cause? Now, I will say this. Listen to me. I want you to notice something in the text. Don't miss this. Compromising could have stopped the chaos in Daniel's life. You can compromise with the devil, and it'll stop a lot of the chaos in your life just like that. I believe that. Watch the compromise he could have done. Notice this. We're still talking about the cause of the den. Watch what it said in verse number 6. Verse 6. Then these presidents and princes assembled assembled together to the king and said thus unto the king, King Darius, live forever. Verse 7, all the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains have consulted together. That's a lie. They didn't consult Daniel. He's one of them presidents. They didn't consult him. You lied. But it said they've consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Do you notice how Daniel could have compromised? Look, look, they, they didn't say, Brother Steve, they didn't say, you got to stop praying. No more praying. That's not what they said. They just said you can't pray to anyone but the king. We're not trying to get you to quit being a Christian. We're not trying to totally get you to give up going to church. Just kind of change it a little bit. We're not saying you can't pray. We're just saying you can't pray to the God of heaven for th- only, and it's only for 30 days. It's only just, it's a trial run. 30 days, and after 30 days, you can go back to praying to the God of heaven and doing what you wanted to do. Y'all listen to me. The devil will always try to get you to compromise your faithfulness. One of the first things the devil does to any child of God's life is he wants you to compromise on the thing that God places a high priority on, faithfulness. The devil will say, well, I mean, it ain't. It ain't that big a deal. Just, just slip a little bit on your, on, on your faithfulness to your Bible reading. Slip a little bit on your faithfulness to church. Slip a little bit on your faithfulness to watching the right things and listening to the right music. Well, I mean, it ain't like you're not going to church. It ain't like you're not going to listen to the right music. It ain't like you're not going to serve the Lord. Just, just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah, well, that little slippery slope, it don't have no end to it tonight. I'm telling you tonight, brother, it still pays to be faithful. It's still right to be faithful whether anybody else is being faithful or not I'm telling you brother I still want to hear well done thou good and faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things be thou ruler over many things my Bible said it's required it's required it's required in stewards that a man be found faithful tonight I'm telling you God might not put a high priority on some things but there's one thing God puts an absolute premium on and his faithfulness tonight and the devil will 
will try and rob you of your faithfulness and the devil will try and get you to compromise on your faithfulness. You just make your mind up. Come hell or high water. It may mean I wind up in a den. It may mean I wind up in the dark. It may mean I have to stand all by myself and be alone. But I will not compromise my faithfulness to the Lord tonight. You say, why won't you compromise your faithfulness to him? Because he ain't never compromised. Hallelujah. He ain't never compromised his faithfulness to me. That Bible said he's a faithful high priest. And his name is faithful and true. He ain't never not been faithful to me. He's always been faithful. His mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And if I serve a God that ain't never compromised his faithfulness to me, how dare I compromise my faithfulness towards him tonight? <laughs> Hallelujah. I just don't understand why I'm going through what I'm going through. Maybe it's because you're faithful. You ought to shout the victory tonight. <laughs> hey, I'm going through this because I'm being faithful to God. Listen to me, the devil doesn't fight things that he's not threatened by. Maybe it's because the reason your family's getting attacked so hard, brother. Maybe the reason your family's getting attacked so hard, sister. Maybe it's because the devil's looked at it and said, if they keep being faithful and they keep serving God, that right there's going to cause me some serious problems. Come on now, ain't that right? I mean, Brother Cliff, maybe, maybe, maybe the reason why the devil fights our family so hard is because he looks and he sees, holy smokes. They keep raising them children and nurturing admonition of the Lord. They keep teaching them that, that the church and the word of God and serving the Lord is the most important thing in life. God, then they're going to raise another generation. And, and that church is going to keep on serving, isn't it? And some more of my youngins are going to get stole from me and adopted into the family of God. And I, 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 so the best thing I can do is keep on attacking them. Maybe they'll just compromise their faithfulness. Don't compromise your faithfulness tonight. The devil's threatened by it. He's threatened by it. I got to hurry. I got to hurry. We see not only the cause of this den. Watch it, watch it. We see not only the cause of the den. Let me just throw this out real quick. We see there's consistency in the den. <laughs> watch Daniel's consistency in the den. I know that what the cause was, but watch his consistency in the den. Notice verses 16 and 20. Watch verse 16. Verse 16. The king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of the lions. Now the king spake unto Daniel... Thy God whom thou servest, watch Daniel's consistency. Thy God whom thou servest sometimes. Thy God whom thou servest when you feel like it. No, no, no. Thy God whom thou servest continually. He will deliver thee. Come down to verse 20. Watch verse 20. The next morning, Daniel goes through the whole night. Next morning. And when he came to the den, the king, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake uh, and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? I like the hound out of this, as Brother Gillum says. Listen to me. I, this is a good almost can't say it. Daniel did not have to tell the king. I'm a continual servant of God. The king watched Daniel's life, Brother Cup, and said, you are a consistent servant of God. I got, a message, I got a message that's coming down the pike here before long, Brother James. I was reading the other day. Don't, don't, don't get too far ahead of me. But I was reading the other day. This is coming before long. Acts eleven twenty six. They were called Christians first at Antioch. It didn't say they called themselves Christians first. Then people watch. You won't find anywhere in the Bible. Find it for me. The word Christian is only mentioned three times in your Bible. And nowhere in the Bible does anyone call themselves a Christian. It is always someone else watching their life and calling them a Christian. See, our problem today is everybody wants to live like hell and the devil and be unfaithful and say, I'm a Christian. And it's give Christianity a bad name. 
in the Bible, they didn't call themselves Christians. They lived for God continually, and the world said, that's a Christian. Oh, Daniel lives for God so consistently, even a lost man said, you're a continual servant of the Most High God. Now, I'm telling you all this tonight. Daniel wasn't just faithfully consistent before the den. It's easy to be faithfully consistent when you're promoted to presidency like Daniel was in verse 2 and 3. Brother Ken, it's easy to be faithfully consistent when you've got total freedom to pray three times a day towards Jerusalem. When you are the top dog president just under the king. And everything is great. Easy to be consistent then. But I want you to notice the king said, while Daniel is going down into the lion's den, you are a continual servant of the Most High God. I tell you this, as soon as they started making their way off down into the den, I know Daniel's consistent before the den, but as soon as he's starting to walk down into the den, most of us have been like, time out. Now let's just not get carried away here now. We'll make some deal or arrangement here. You say 30 days, right? One month? Yeah, okay, I, I'll shut my windows. He's praying with his windows open. I just start shutting my windows. I think now would be a good time to start doing what Jesus said. Pray in the closet. I'm going to hunt my prayer closet for 30 days. Now would be a good time to start having closet prayer meeting. No, Daniel's going off in the lion's den, and he ain't backing up. He ain't saying, I, I, I wish I could change it now. No, sir. He's consistent before the lion's den. He's consistent in the lion's den. He's consistent after the lion's den. Can I say this tonight? We need some more Christians like Job that would say right in the middle of their trouble, the Lord gave, the Lord took away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He was worth, he was worth serving on that side of the den. He's worth serving in the den. He'll be worth serving after the den. He's God tonight. Oh, Paul's on that voyage, Brother John. Oh, Paul's on that voyage. And, and he's getting in that big old storm. And they didn't listen to him. And the wind's against him. And the boat's like to be torn apart. And right smack dab in the middle of it, Brother Xander, old Paul steps up and said, Sirs, I believe God. I, I'm in the storm, but I believe God before the storm. I believe God in the storm. I'll still be believing God after the storm this lost world needs to see some Christians who don't just got sunny day religion they don't just got sunshine religion but they got something that still works in the dark seasons of the night tonight cause of the den you know what your kids need to see mama you know what your kids need to see daddy some consistency in the darkness of your den I know my mama is going through a dark den experience. But she keeps on praying. She keeps on reading the Bible. And she keeps on going to church. And she keeps on passing out them little tracks. And she keeps on playing them gospel songs on the radio. And while she rides down the road, she cries and lifts her hands and blesses the name of God. <laughs> now that's something real right there, y'all. <laughs> That's something real. I like it when it gets surreal that when you're in the dark of the lion's den, I'm still continually serving the Lord. Ain't quit on him, ain't throw the towel in. Still serving even in the midst of the dark den tonight. The cause of the den. I've known a lot of Christians, Brother Travis, give up in the middle of their dark den experience. I've known, Brother Bill. I've known Christians in the dark den experience. They just said, man, this is, peace out. I've seen it, Brother Skip. You've seen it. You've been in church any length of time. You've seen it. You serve God for any length of time. Maybe you've even been there. Got in a dark den and got a little bit wobbly on the axle. Started just hanging out at the house instead of showing up where God could help you at the house of God. Stop reading your Bible because you felt like God didn't do you right. Let dark seasons of life come into your life that you felt was unfair. And so because you judged God as being unjust and unfair, you just said, I'm done. 
God, give us some consistency. I'm talking about me. Lord, I don't know what's coming tomorrow, and I sure do hope everything stays peaches and cream, and I know that ain't reality. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I hope to God that when everything crashes on tomorrow, whenever it is, that there'll still be some consistency. I mean, be like old Peter. Lord, to whom shall we go? Where are we going to go to? You're the only one with the words of eternal life, Brother Keith. Cause of the den. Consistency in the den. Here's my favorite point of the message. We see Daniel had company in the den. <laughs> this is my favorite part of the message. Been wanting to get to this all day long. Literally, had, literally audibly shouted out loud in my office today when I was studying this point out. We see not only the, co- the, <laughs> the cause of the den and the consistency in the den, but we see the company in the den. Watch his company while he's in the den. You say, who's in the den with Daniel? The lions? Somebody bigger than the lions was in the den (laughs) with old Dan. Check it out. Verse number 21. Verse 21. Spoiler alert. Daniel lives. Verse 21. Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. Watch his company. My God hath sent his angel (laughs) and hath shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me. You say, preacher, he ain't in there alone. No, he ain't in there alone. You say, who's in there with him? The same one that will be in the dark lion's den with you. You say, what what angel's that, Michael? Gabriel? No, 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 no. No. This is that angel of God in the Old Testament. Matter of fact, matter of fact, in Sunday school, I've been, I've been showing y'all and proving to y'all that the angel of God in the Old Testament is the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll show you, I'll show you a greater proof than I've showed you yet. You want to see the greater proof? Watch it. I'm going to show it to you. This, brother, I, I about, I about knock walls down in my office today, Brother Chad. He said, my God hath sent his angel. Ain't that what he just said, verse 22? Go back to chapter 3 and the three Hebrew children in the fiery furnace. Watch chapter 3, verse 28. Don't miss it. 328. Daniel 328. I'm talking about his company in the den. 328. Daniel said he sent his angel. 328. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, 328. Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent what, y'all? All right, glad I suckered you in. Back up to verse 25 and see who that is. Read the last four words of verse 25. Is anybody seeing the last four words of verse 25? It ain't just an angel. It's the Son of God. It's the Son of God. It's the Son of God. You say, who will be with me when I walk off down in the darkness of the lion's den? The Son of God. The Son of God. The Son of God. The same one with Daniel. The same one with me. God's only Son. The Lord Jesus Christ. He will walk into the dark with us. Glory. Hallelujah. Bless the name of God. I'm glad he said, I will never leave thee and I will never forsake thee. He is in the den with us. Now I want y'all to understand something. I want y'all to understand something. Why? I thought about this today, Brother Zach. Why would God send not, why wouldn't God just send a regular old angel in the fiery furnace and in the lion's den? Why does God send his son as the angel of the Lord into those two places? Here it is. Here's why. Because he knows what they're going through. We serve a sympathizing Savior who is touched with the feeling, Brother Randall, of our infirmities. You say, he don't know. 
He don't know what them three Hebrew boys is going through. Oh, yeah, he does. My Bible said in Acts chapter 2 when Jesus died and was buried, Thou wilt not, this is a prophecy of Jesus, Thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Jesus knows what it's like to walk through fire and not get burned. <laughs> so he gets in the fire with him and says, I know what you're going through. You say, what about Daniel? What about Daniel? You know what all that's a picture of in Daniel 6? It's a picture of the life and ministry of the Lord. Amen. Daniel's got an excellent spirit. Daniel's faithful. Daniel's promoted. But then Daniel's lied on. Daniel's mistreated. Daniel has a terrible trial. And then Daniel goes down under the ground. But he don't stay down. He comes back up. It's a picture of the Lord. Daniel's a type of Jesus Christ. He was promoted. The Lord's honor and favor was on his son. This is my son whom I'm well pleased. He was faithful and always did the things that pleased the father. But he's lied on, mistreated. They tried him unjustly. He went down, but he got back up. And he's still alive tonight. So you see. You say, well, what's that got to do with me? This is what it's got to do with you. Uh, You serve a high priest that he knows where you're at. He knows what you've been through. He knows what you're going through. He's not some God that don't understand. He's there and he sympathizes with you. So can I say it like this? (laughs) Can I say it like this? If you're going into a lion's den, it's good to have the lion of the tribe of Judah with you. (laughs) Can I say it like this? If you're going to go into a lion's den, better bring your own lion with you. That blesses my heart if it don't bless nobody else. If you're going to go into a lion's den, you better have the lion of the tribe of Judah on your side. Brother, I'm telling you, they might have been some man-eating lions in there, but there ain't none of them like the lion on my side. There ain't none of them like the lion on the church's side. He's the lion of God. He's the lion of Judah. He's the lion of the church. And I'm glad when I go into a lion's den, I've got a lion on my side tonight. Be worried about be worried about no little putty cats down there in the line of them. Just little old kitty cats. You got the line. You say, that Bible said the wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous are bold as a line. How come Daniel don't say he's kicking, he's scratching, he's fussing, he's fine? He just walked off down the line and I'll be back in a little while. Why? I walked in with my line. And my lion is is so bad, it said his angels stopped the mouths of the lions. In other words, when they saw Daniel's lion, they saw his angel, the son of God, brother Kevin. When they saw his lion, they said, shut up, boys, that dude's bad. That lion's, that lion's bigger and badder than any of us. Y'all better lay off that dude right there. You liable to get eat. I've, 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 watched, I've, watched some of the, I've watched some of them discovery programs. I like to watch some of that sometimes. Them Serengeti and them discovery programs about them lions out there, Brother Randy. And man, I, I, they, they tough and they big and bad until, until one that's a, that's a bigger, badder lion shows up. And, and they just kind of real easy, like, just kind of start avoiding him and staying away from him. <laughs> All night long, the Lord G.O. Daniel laid down, got him a rock, propped up on his head, went to sleep, and the Lord just stood there, and them lions just walked around and said, you better stay away from that cat right there. Y'all better, that dude's bad to the bone. I'm telling you, we serve a God that'll be your company in the lion's den. You don't walk alone. You don't go alone. The Lord's with you tonight. So here's where we started our message at about over there in Isaiah about knowing the Lord. It's not about you. It's about him getting the credit. So we see not only the company in the den and we see the consistency in the den, the cause of the den, but lastly we see who gets the credit after the den. Who gets the credit for this? Well, it sure ain't Daniel. 
Watch your text in verse number 25. We're going to get down here. Verse 25. And watch, watch what your Bible says. Verse 25. Then King Darius wrote unto all the people, nations and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble in fear before Daniel. No, Daniel don't get the credit for this. Men tremble in fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and steadfast forever. And his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. And his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivereth. Daniel didn't deliver himself. He delivereth and rescueth. And he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth. Who, speaking of the Lord, hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. When Daniel comes up, he don't come up saying, I'm a real prayer warrior. I prayed my way out of that one. Hey, I want to let you know, King, I fasted all night long. That's why I got up. I want to let you know I'm a great, great Christian. That's why, no, 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 no. He comes out and the first thing he says is, my God sent his angel to deliver me. He comes out of the dark telling everybody about him. He, he did this. It's all about him. And because of this, because of this, I'm done right here. Because of this, Daniel makes an impact on a lost man. Do you see the impact that Daniel has made on this lost man? There is ain't no saved man. I think Daniel gets his quote unquote saved in the Old Testament sense. Uh, after this, he starts believing in the God of, of Daniel. What gets him to that place? Because he watches Daniel be faithful before the den, consistent in the den, God's company with him in the den. And he watches Daniel come out and give credit to the one that got him out of the den. And this lost man says, they must be something real about your God. When this world sees the dark dens you've been through. I mean, when they see, man, these are... You know what these dens normally do to people? Look what it normally does to people. Watch what your Bible says in verse 24. Watch what the den that Daniel was in normally does to normal people. Verse 24, the king commanded and they brought those men which had accused Daniel. And they cast them into the den of lions. Them, their children, their wives, and the lions had the mastery of them. And break all their bones in pieces or ever they came at the bottom of the den. Most families, it, it was their wives, their children, their whole home. You know why most families, don't, don't miss this, I'm done, but don't miss this. You know why most families don't survive going into the darkness of the den? They don't go into it with the lion. They just go into it trying to fight the lions off themselves. I'm going to come in. I'm going to try and fight. You can't. There ain't one man in here, not one, that barehanded or with a knife in your hand. There ain't one man in here barehanded could fight a full-grown lion. I don't care how big you are. The biggest fellas in here. We got some big fellas in here. Brother David Hyde, Brother Mike Hunt, Brother Kevin Stewart. Brother Randall Beaver, I don't care who you are. There ain't one in here that if we cleared this place out and we put you in here with a man-eating full-grown lion, you're dead. I don't care how bad you think you are. You're dead. You're dead. You are D-E-D. -E <laughs> I get it. Hope you got it. You're like what they said, D-R-T. You're dead right there. You're dead. And I find many of the dens that people go through in life, whatever it may be, marital trouble, financial trouble, health trouble, just life trouble, mental trouble, they walk off with their families down into these dens, and the lines of the dens just eat them up. Just eat them up. They have no hope. You know what they need to see? Yeah. They need to see you as a child of God, Brother Glenn, you walk off into these dens. And somehow you walked out on the other side. And you wasn't bitter and you wasn't mad and you wasn't hateful. And you come out on the other side giving God glory. And they say, how'd that happen? And you get the chance to tell them, Brother Roger, 
Let me tell you about who went through it with me. This is, how, this is how I made it through cancer with my child. This, this is how I made it through that dark scene standing there beside a casket. This is how I made it through that dark night of depression. This is how I made it through that dark scene when, when somebody betrayed me and hurt me. This is how I made it through that. This is how I made it. It wasn't me. It's all him. Esther, help me up here. And then you get the opportunity to lead somebody to your Jesus. Not lead somebody to you, lead somebody to him. Tonight you say, preacher, I'm in a dark den. Or you know somebody in a dark den. She walked up in here and you, you've done walked off down into it. You say, what should I do? Realize maybe the cause of it is because you're being faithful. So don't get weary in well-doing. Don't get weary in well-doing. Then be consistent as you can be in the middle of it. The world needs to see it. Then recognize and realize you got some company. You're not here alone. And then walk out on the other side and give God the credit for it. Sweet things in dark places. Let's all stand tonight. Father, I've tried my best to give God's people what you gave me. Lord, you so richly over the last several days fed my soul with this passage. I was held. I've read this countless times, heard it preached on many times, and, and there's nothing new tonight that's been brought out, but it sure did help me again. Glad the Word of God is always fresh, always new, always helps us. Timeless, timeless stories from the Word of God that can help us tonight. Help your people. So many of them walking off down into the den of lines that if they don't got you helping them, they're going to get swallowed up. They're going to get eat. God, that roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The devil is down in these dens trying to eat up God's people. But there's one that's greater than he is that's with us. Help you people tonight, I pray. In Jesus' name, if you need to come.